my name is Shayla and today I'm here to wrap up the rest of my reads for the month of August. I do wrap up everything that I read during read a -rama in the last vlog so I will leave that linked for you for you guys to check out. I don't know if it'll be it'll be down below and it'll probably be on the end screen. So let's dig into everything else that I've read because it's a lot and I kind of went on an audiobook binge for a bit. So let's just go ahead and talk about those things. All right, so let's start with the audiobook. So I've got Officer Off Limits, which is a line of duty novel. Um, I don't remember if I talked about this yet or not. This is just continuing on in the same Tessa Bailey series that I was reading from. And then I also read, I'll also listen to Asking for Trouble, which is the last of the line of duty novels as far as I can find and really enjoyed them both. Um, the stories were solid, they were really interesting, and I love seeing those couplings kind of get together. It was a good time. The other one that I read was Unfixable by Tessa Bailey. This follows one of this, the sister of the girl from the first book in that series, um, Protecting What's His. And so it's kind of a spin-off featuring her and a Irish brogue romance, and it was kind of everything. I really loved it. I'm not giving you guys a lot of details on these, obviously, because they're spin-offs from existing series or other series, like continuations and series. So go ahead and follow those. They're really fun. So the other audiobook that I got read <laughs> in between the last time we chatted was Dare to Resist by Laura K. Now this was a little short novella. This is technically a 0.5 on a series. I do plan on listening to the rest. And we're following two programmers who have known each other forever. And then they meet up at a, they're both bidding on the same job for their companies. Um, the guy is independent and runs his own company and the girl works for a bigger firm and deals with all of the things that women in tech have to deal with and it was really well done and they have this connection. It's really good and they have history like they'd hooked up before and it's so good. It's just so good. It's like three and a half hours. It's not that long. It's part of Audible Escape. Y'all just need to go check it out. All right, and then I'm gonna go into my digital Kindle reads as well while I have my phone right here. Um, I did participate in the 24 hour Smutathon and I did read six things. One of those being the Dare to Resist audiobook but I did read five reads from my Kindle as well. So let's go over those. The first one we have here is Bite Me by Cece Wood. This is a vampire novel and it was really fun the way she decided to play with vampire lore. And I feel like our protagonist got kidnapped one too many times for me to really love it. So I ended up giving this one three stars. It was fun, it was a good time. Not the best thing I've ever read, but it didn't do anything to really make me super mad at it. So there we are at a three. The next one I'm gonna talk about is Huddle With Me Tonight by Farrah Roshan, is how I wanna say the author name, I'm not 100% sure. But this is a football-based romance and it was really fun because it's about a football player who has a degenerative eye disease and he is looking to get out of the game because he knows it's inevitable for him. And so he wrote a book and he is helping his sister open a restaurant because it's her dream. And his book gets thrashed by a blogger and they meet and he likes the blogger and the blogger likes him. And it's just really fun and awkward. And it ends up in this like cooking show for them to like prove things to each other. It's really cute. It's really fun. Highly recommend. I would give that one probably a four star. Mr. Imperfect by Karina Bliss. This was my least favorite read from this adventurous day. That one I gave two stars. It was just, all of it was way too far-fetched for me to believe. It's one of those, you know, matchmaker from the grave moments. And there are just some things that happen in it that are just way too far-fetched for my personal liking. It did not feel realistic, even though it's a contemporary I mean, I can suspend disbelief when I'm told from the beginning that it's not reality, but this one I was told it was reality and yeah, it was just too much. Couldn't really handle it very well, if I'm honest. So next we have Tell Me by Abigail Strom and this one was my favorite read from the day. I would give this one a 4.5 stars. We're dealing with a bookshop owner 
reconnecting with a childhood friend that she'd always had feelings for, but he's outdoorsy and a cowboy and he always teased her, but it's because he liked her and he thought she was too good for him. And anyways, they start to connect after um, they both lose somebody close to them and it's beautiful. It's so well done. There's this moment where she introduces the cowboy to Anne of Green Gables. I was totally crying. It was so cute. It was so sweet. It was such a good story. Like I highly recommend this one, 4.5 stars. And then last but not least for the Smutathon reads is Accidental Love by Mia Ford. Again, this one's like a three star. It's one of those childhood friend because their parents were friends and they always wanted them to end up together but they always felt like they couldn't be together, but they hooked up once and blah, blah, blah. Again, this one was a little far-fetched for me, not as bad as Mr. Imperfect, but a little bit. And again, it didn't do anything to make me ultra super mad at it. So again, we're sitting at a three stars. It's fine, it's fun, it wasn't that long. And I think it was one of those book bub free things for me at one point. So yeah, that's what I ended up reading during Smutathon and having a great time. So next I have Bringing Down the Duke. This is a historical romance that takes place during the women's suffrage movement and our female character is directly in contact with all of that. It was really well done. I really enjoyed it. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Because it had just enough snark to make it feel a little bit more like a almost Tessa Dare style novel and I really enjoyed it for that reason. So let's go ahead and dig into the few physical books that I've also read. I know I read a ton, guys. I'm really sorry. I was busy reading and not making content for you, so there's that. First up, we have Wish You Were Mine by Tara Civic. I really like Tara Civic's writing. And again, she loves to do contemporaries that tug on your heartstrings while warming them at the same time. Anyways, in this one, we're dealing with two childhood friends who always thought they would be together and all of a sudden one of them disappears and it uproots the other person in their life and things move on from there. It's so well done, so good. Definitely tugged at the heartstrings, shed a tear while reading this one. So good, highly recommend. Next we have Sam Piper Shore by Debbie Mason. This is another book in the Harmony Harbor series. I really like the Harmony Harbor series. I like Debbie Mason. These are definitely Hallmark movies. The Harmony Harbor ones tend to be more beach style um, romances and they're just really fun. They're a really good time and it's just so fun. This one has to do with weddings and matchmakers as well. So it's really a good time. Highly recommend checking out the series if you haven't. Again, this is like far into the series. So I don't want to give away too much, but yes, definitely worth it. Next, we have The Paris Orphan by Natasha Lester. Now, this is one where we're dealing with two different timelines. We're dealing with Paris during World War II, and we're dealing with like 2005 now, and about someone learning about their heritage. And it's so well done. It's so well crafted. It's so beautiful. I cried multiple times while reading this one. Maybe I'm just extra emotional in August. I don't know, but it was good. Highly recommend. This one comes out the third of this month. So if you haven't heard of it yet, that's probably why, because it hasn't, it's not actually out yet. But again, Natasha Lester's writing is beautiful. Her prose are lovely to read. And again, my Goodreads is linked down below if you want more information on this beautiful book. And last but not least, we have Dragonfly by Lila Meekum. Again, another historical romance that takes place in France. For some reason, historical romance was just kind of my thing this month. And Again, this is another one. I really like Leela Meekum's prose. Um, she writes beautifully and I always really enjoy it. Um, this one's definitely on the dense side, has a lot of family drama and all those kinds of things, but I do highly recommend checking out Dragonfly by Leela Meekum. This has been out about a month. I don't know, I don't think I have my review for this one written yet, but I'll try to get that written before this video is up so that you guys can get my full details there. I know I've read a ton and I know I'm speeding through things, but I'm really, really sorry. I don't want to keep you guys here all day. I read one additional graphic novel to the few that I read during like Readerama slash Get Graphic, and that is the Backstagers Volume 3. This one is just kind of a collection of little vignettes 
that take place with our backstagers and on the stage. It was really cute and really sweet. It's called Encore, so I don't think there's really gonna be any more. These were just some little extras that they threw into a volume, but it was really cute. If you're looking for cute little holiday kind of stories, because there's a Valentine's Day stories in, in here and Halloween story in here, they're just really cute. I highly recommend checking it out. I really loved the backstagers. Now let's dig into the manga. So I finally read Strobe Edge Volume 2, which is a high school shoujo romance in which we follow Ninako. And Ninako has feelings for Ren. Ren is really sweet to her, has always kind of been nice to her without necessarily, you know, leading her on or anything, but she's developed feelings for him. When she confesses her feelings for him very publicly at a train station, he lets her down as gently as he can, letting her know that he does have a girlfriend, and this volume deals with the fallout of all of that. It's really interesting. I'm interested to see where Saki Saka takes this. I've heard really good things about the rest of the series, so I'm hoping to order more of this one soon. Next we have LDK Volume 6, Shusei's a punk. I'm mad at him. And he's not being nice to Aoi right now, and... Aoi's not really done anything wrong. It's just been bad timings and stuff because that happens in shoujo romance. But yes. Anyways, I am interested to see where it goes because the end of this volume gave me a lot of hope. So I'm looking forward to picking up volume seven soon. Next we have Daytime Shooting Star volume two. And oh my gosh, this was so cute. My ship has changed. The person I want to win at the end is not the person I wanted to win in the previous volume. But I'm okay with the change because I feel better about this. I had thought about it in the previous one, I'm gonna be honest. But anyways, there's lots of blushing, there's a kiss, there's so much good in this one, and that's all I'm gonna tell you. Go read it. Next we have Q Volume 4, and I love my volleyball boys. This one involves a tournament with a school that they've never been able to beat, and them learning to work together more as a team. It's fantastic. Highly recommend. Checking out Haikyuu if you haven't. I've never been more attached to characters and the sport of volleyball in my life. It's so good. Highly recommend. Next we have Girl from the Other Side, Volume 7. I continue to love the art in this one. I feel like this one's probably only going to be a couple more volumes because I feel like the story is kind of coming into its own, kind of closing an arc of the story at least. And oh my gosh. <laughs> So much is happening and obviously this is volume 7 so I can't tell you other than you have to read the series. It's so good. This one's definitely on the darker side especially for ones that I tend to read. It's really really good. That's all I can say is it's really really good. Next we have Hatsuharu volume 8 which was absolutely wonderful. I really enjoyed what was going on in this volume. Um, all of our characters are learning even more about each other. It's so good. Ugh. Everybody just needs to read the series. We primarily follow our male characters rather than our female characters. So it's a really, um, it's on the more unique side for shoujo that way. Typically when you're reading shoujo, you're following your female. In this series, we're following our males. It's really interesting, really fun, highly recommend. Next we have Call Me Can't Communicate Volume 2, which might be my favorite manga read of this wrap up. Daytime Shooting Star might be it too. But anyways, we get to know Komi more in this one. We get to see Komi out in public, outside of school, taking care of some things. And there's a chapter where she goes and gets her hair cut and I was crying. Um, this very much depicted what hairdressers have to do in their job on a regular basis. And I'm gonna be teary when I think about this because I never expected to find that in this manga. It was so well done, so beautiful. Highly recommend the series. I, I just, I can't say any more about it. It's so well done and it's funny while being sweet and poignant and cute at the same time. It's just the best. Go read it. Next we have Blank Canvas Volume 2 by my queen Akiko Hikigashimura and again this is another one that was so so good and watching Akiko's journey through her own eyes and her calling herself out essentially in this series is so entirely beautiful because she sees the mistakes she's made and she's not afraid to own up to her mistakes and it's so well done. This is kind of a Kiko through going to art school and it's really interesting. I really love it. Highly recommend. Next we have Silver Spoon Volume 10 which is another series that I continue to love and adore and I get 
more and more attached to Haichi or Haichiken or whatever you want to call him. I keep getting more and more attached to him as the series goes on. And the other students that he goes to school with, I'm very invested in all of them. And it's so good. And I like learning more about um, the agricultural world. This is very educational and very interesting to me for that reason. So again, another series that I strongly recommend. Now, my least favorite graphic novel for this bunch was actually the Full Metal Alchemist Complete Four Panel Comics. This was just okay. Um, this was just kind of a compilation of short little four panel comics about our Full Metal Alchemist characters. Um, it didn't really have a cohesive story or plot. She did try to bunch certain themes together and that was fun. And like I said, it didn't do anything necessarily bad or wrong. It just wasn't my favorite. I'd rather just read Full Metal Alchemist, I think. So if you were thinking about this one, maybe give it a pass, pick up the art book instead, because that thing looks stunning. Okay, friends, so those are my reads for the month of August. All of the previous wrap-ups will be linked down below, so you can definitely go and check out everything that I read during August, which was a ton. And I don't know how I did it myself. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite read in the month of August was, and I will see you guys later.